one, two, three. Okay. Hip, hip. Yeah. Hip, hip. Yesterday's talk, which was based on universal ethics, the message of love and compassion. And people were really liking it. And then we had film screening yesterday with uh, Stanjan Gya. So students were so much involved that we had to wait till 8 otherwise it was only supposed to, it was only till uh, 6.30. So we had to stretch the entire event because people were really getting more involved. The film was also about the message of love and compassion. So the film was about Ka Stantin Gya and his sister. So. And then the students were asking, coming up with many different questions related to their life, uh, related to the problem the students they are facing in day-to-day -day life. And today we have uh, Mr. Wangcho, Mr. Segmul Wangcho. We normally, and we usually in Ladakh we know him as Segmul Wangcho. So he'll be coming here today and he'll be speaking on the importance of ethics in the educational system. So. Let's see. Thank you so much. Samla, how was the experience? It was very nice, something new. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I just came here for tea and then samosa. <laughs> the day one one in the beginning was very, like, you know, um, troublesome and very, like, uh, uh, very hectic, but yeah, once uh, people started to come in and the things started to get settled, so like you know, it went smooth in the evening. And in the end of the day, like you know, after the event was about to, when the event was about to close, we sat together, we had a talk, and few of our members cried when they saw the joy and the positivity inside the room, which was filled by Geshe Dorji Damdul and also by Sandin Dorji Gya, whose film was so touching and so was like, it was so like, you know, um, hard, like, you know, um, heart melting that he, he showed his, he showed the movie about his uh, sister, his own sister. So in that movie, like, you know, he portrayed how the, how the people in, back in Himalayas, they stay, and the best part about Sanjim Gaya's like movie screening and the and like his movie is like the the way he explains the movie, the way he touches our heart, you know, like it goes inside, uh, it goes deep inside, and it it lives it lives something in the, into our minds. So that's it, that is what like you know was the sole purpose of the whole conference event. Asresh, my name is. Hi, my name is Julius and I just been attending this flower drama and out here it's been like good culture. We could meet different uh, background people and then it was a very good moment for us and especially the youth. So, thank you. Hola, how was your experience? Uh, it was really good but though I am made some mistakes during the performance but although I really enjoyed it. You did a good job. Enjoy the show. <laughs> As a performer, nga mama ko experience so mule din e nga audience ko ng first yung yan nga lang as the pitching stage where you drink ka o daksang nga mitkan sa tara din e kaso na mga chukle ka yung ayaw mama ko knowledge tobile din e mama ko patasong din e ito sa future nang kone organized din din na ayaw malimus sa tara. This event to be a success. I'm hoping for the best for you guys. And you are. Me, I'm Liang Mit, a uh, member of Second Student Association. <laughs> <laughs> very good experience. Like I have never done such a program before, so I'm very fortunate and I'm thankful to Flying Dharma to give me this chance to walk in this confluence. Balmo, how was the first day? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Nishala, I have uh, two uh, very small questions from you. Uh, one on the basis of the talk that you have given about the subject and the object. Uh, so when we are contemplating, when we are just... Uh, so how does this change? Like when we are contemplating, so there the subject becomes an object. So how do we distinguish between... So does that also come from the subject that, that we want to think about 
the mind My itself. Thought. Yeah. Very good. And the second very simple is that uh, on the basis of the theme that we have, uh, the, 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 the confluence that there are a lot of uh, confluence between the inter-traditions, but what about the intra-traditions? That sometimes it is, there's a lot of problem between, uh, you know, within something. So what, what do you think, what do you suggest to Flavin Dharma for that? This is a very serious question. Thank you so much. The first one is about the subjectivity. Let's say, okay, the flower, the flower is object and your mind is a subject. And then, it's not always that, it, it's not that you always look at the flower for the object, but you can also think about your own mind, how my mind works. What I discussed with your name, Faisal, what I discussed with Faisal, how my mind works, how to grow, how to grow myself with compassion and with knowledge, what is my knowledge like? So your knowledge is a subject, but the mind, this now is becoming little logic or little philosophy, the mind which is thinking about your mind, the mind which has been thought of, that is the object. Mind which is thinking is the, the subject. So within that, we can speak about the, the subject becoming an object of another subject. Okay, then about the inter and the intra. Inter is, for example, say that amongst the different traditions, religion, for example, say religious traditions, Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, Jainism, Judaism, then the Baha'i, Jurassicism, right? Okay, this is inter. It's a confluence of the inter religious traditions, inter ethnicities. Other one is the confluence with the intra. Intra, for example, say within Buddhism, Theravada Mahayana, within Islam, Sunni, Shia, within Hinduism, the the Shavites Shalva, Shalva, and the Vishnavites. Right? And then within Christianity, Catholicism and the Protestants, and within uh, the Jainism, what is that? Jainism there too? Uh, Shutambar and Digambar, you're getting it? So these are the intra. It's so important that the confluence must be thought of, not only uh, in the context of the inter, but also in the context of the intra, which is so important. And his holding this is so keen that both should happen. So he's put so much effort to make sure that all the different religions they come together. One. Then number two, between religious and non-religious to come together. Between religious and the science to come together. And intra. Say within Christianity, the Catholicism and the Protestants come together. Within Buddhism, Theravada, Mohammed come together. Right? So that is so important to confuse. In fact, one approach which I truly, truly appreciate with the Flavian Dharma and uh, Tashila is that he is bringing everyone from every tradition, no matter what, just in the spirit of brotherhood and sisterhood. This is beautiful. That is a real spirit of confluence. Good society and good colleges, university, you can do much, much, much better than me. But you have to have just to jump it, you know. You have to be not fair. I can do what Geshara giving us the teaching in the past session that she said that Geshara was telling us that we have to be believe in ourselves, in our mind. Everything is dependent on the everything can do it, you know. This is why I thought that this is Menas 32. Now I wanted to go to Menas 50. That's why, like, since last three years, I'm shooting in Gobi Desert in the Siberia. I'm just coming back from there. Because there I want to realize, you know, when our friends are coming from India to Ladakh, and they say, oh, it's very cold, you know, how you live here? I say, why these people say like this, you know? Because it's true, because they are born in the warm places. I, when I was in Menas 50, three, four days I can't go outside. Everywhere is so cold, it's Menas 40. Just imagine Menas 50, all my equipment are like that. Still, there is a shepherd, of camel shepherd, and a wonderful story. Because I don't know how much I'm capable to bring this story, but last three years I captured all, and uh, in 2020 I'll bring this story soon. And like this, I have some other few stories, but uh, never afraid. Just jump it, just do it. Really, this is my way. I always say there is a two way to do in life. This is what happened to me.
One way is very difficult, one way is very easy. And sometimes, where do you want to choose? And everybody, we always we choose the easiest one. And then we becoming a lazy. And then all wanted to search for this luxury. And we have to, to choose the most difficult one. Other come easily. This is what happened to me as a shepherd's boy, you know. So this, this is, you all can do much better, really. This is the Thank you so much, sir, for your inspired words. In this era of uh, capitalism, we often they choose to go for profit over principles. In in this era, who who, who will be the moral compass for bringing in like a values to the our day to day life? Because I have experienced, uh, I have an incident ha happened few years a few weeks ago. Like uh, I was going for a lobby. Uh, and I met a guy oh, on the near the office, and he must be a, like a business person. I don't know, but then the way he speaks, like uh, the, uh, the actually the uh, the theme was that uh, <coughs> drop down the dragon uh, project, which is like uh, for Google. Google is uh, making a search engine in China, which is called Dragon, and then we don't support that because they just do it on censorship. So we, like, I, I spoke to guy and he is so angry and he was telling me, uh, it doesn't matter because like uh, censorship is happening everywhere and we don't care for that. We, uh, at the end of the day, we're getting money. And he was so like so sure about those things that he was like arguing without any like conscious. So I was like, well, I wonder like this is the real reason and this is the this is the kind of a symptom that we are facing today. So, so, who will be the model compass for in this era? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for an interesting question. Seeking moral compasses without, outside, is good and you're lucky if you find, but often I think we have to be our own moral compass because very often, very often, you may not find the, the overpowering majority more often than not, go for momentary, you know, advantages and benefits and so on. In such times, to have a strong uh, sense in yourself is very important. You know, 99 people going the wrong way doesn't make that way right. And only one person going the right way doesn't make that way wrong. It's not democracy in, in, you know, ethics and moral behavior. It's what uh, is right, is right, even if nobody treads that path or even if only one person treads that path. So we are lucky if we have people who show gravity in their actions and we can follow and take inspiration. But there will be all the times occasions when majority and perhaps all are following, you know, momentary uh, uh, benefits and you have to take your own stand. That's what I do.